And so I want to talk to you about how to stop feeling bad, how to stop feeling bad. And it may sound like a very superficial kind of teaching. Oh, feeling bad. Like, why would God care about that? Because God cares about everything about your life. He cares about every detail of your life. And he cares about every one of us and how we feel and what we're living and what we're going through. And he wants us to learn how to master our emotions rather than how to let our emotions rather than our emotions mastering us. You know, everybody has emotions, but we just don't want our emotions to have us. We want to be in control of them rather than them being in control of us. And I'm going to show you how to stop feeling bad. You know, I don't know if you realize this or not, but your chains are gone. Your chains to sin are gone. The things that have chained us to sin and chained us to guilt and chained us to addictions and chained us to depression, the chains of, of, um, of oppression are gone. Jesus came and liberated us from all the chains that had been holding us down to a defeated life, to a fearful life, to a, a defeated life, a, a life of fear, a life of anxiety, a life of worry, a life of depression, a life of addiction. I experienced all of those things at a very young age. And I'll talk about that with you in just a moment. But I want you to realize your chains have been broken. Every one of us have been set free. The problem is, is that the devil works overtime to try to stop us from realizing the freedom that we've been given. Jesus said, if the Son has set you free, you shall be free indeed. And so Jesus, when he died on the cross and said, it is finished, he set us free from sin. He set us free from addictions. He set us free from the curse. He set us free from loneliness. He set us free from fear. He set us free from depression. He set us free from anger. He set us free from the fear of people and the fear of torture and the fear of punishment. He set us free from condemnation and guilt. But if you don't know it, you won't experience it. You could have freedom, but not enjoy your freedom because you're ignorant of it. You could have healing, but not enjoy your healing because you're ignorant, ignorant of it. You could have salvation, but not enjoy your salvation because you're ignorant of the joy of your salvation. You remember David described the joy of his salvation. He said, restore to me, O Lord, the joy of my salvation. David didn't ask God to restore his salvation. In Psalm 51, verse 11 or 12, he said, Restore to me, Lord, the joy. Woo! Yeah. The joy of my salvation. He didn't say, Restore to me my salvation, because God doesn't take it away. Let me ask you something. This is a topic that people stumble over, and I don't want to be all theological on you today but I just want you to be at peace today because God wants to restore to you and to me the joy and the enjoyment of our salvation. The joy and the enjoyment of our salvation. And I want to show you how to stop feeling bad about your life. Stop feeling bad about letting people down. Stop feeling bad about not being able to do everything for your kids. Stop feeling bad about all the mistakes you made. Stop feeling bad about what you, where you've fallen short. Stop feeling bad about what you didn't do, what you did do. We need to learn to stop feeling bad about our lives. Because if we let ourselves, we would be condemned the rest of our lives because we don't pray enough. Oh, I feel bad because I'm not praying enough. And then when we're praying, I feel bad because I'm not reading the Bible enough. And when we're reading the Bible, I feel bad I'm not sharing with others enough. And when we're sharing with others, I feel bad I'm not praying enough. I feel bad I'm not with my family enough. I feel bad I'm not working harder. I feel bad I'm not doing this. I feel bad I'm not doing that. And the devil will obliterate your emotions and obliterate your life with guilt and condemnation, accusing you day and night of all that you've fallen short of. And that's why Jesus took care of this stuff. He wiped it all away so that we don't have to suffer over our sins. We don't have to grieve over them anymore. We don't have to lament over them anymore. Jesus isn't asking us to beg for our salvation back because he didn't take David's salvation away. And if he could have taken it away from anybody, it would have been David with all the things he did wrong, but he didn't take David's salvation away. So why is he going to take yours away? He's not ever going to do that because the Bible says in Romans eleven twenty nine, 29, the gifts of God 
are without repentance. They are irrevocable. And the greatest gift of God is salvation. Because I didn't earn it. You didn't earn it. Can any can everybody agree that salvation is a gift? It's one of God's gifts. It's the best gift, right? Come on, talk to me now. It's the best gift, right? And what does it say about the gifts and calling of God? They're what? Irrevocable. Irrevocable. He's not taking them back. Sorry, you smoked a cigarette. You're gone. Sorry, you had a bad thought. You're out of here. Sorry, you had lust in your eyes. I'm plucking one out. Jesus, when Jesus came, he fixed it all. He washed it all away. Everything was broken. Everything was fragmented. Everything was understood just in pieces. But when Jesus comes, he fulfills the picture and he gives us the total picture of what he is and who he is and why he came. And let me show you what one of the reasons he came, because he came to remove our sins, came to restore us to the father. But let me show you what else he came to do. John chapter 10, verse 10. Watch this. John chapter 10, verse 10. For the thief, Jesus says, the thief comes only for three reasons. What are they? The thief comes to steal. Sounds reasonable for a thief. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. This is what the devil wants to do in your life. Wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, but I have come. Hey, hey, I love that word, but. But I have come. That they may have life and have it abundantly. Now the Amplified Bible says it really great and really brings out the fullness of this verse. It says the thief comes only in order to steal, to kill, and destroy. Jesus said, but I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Now, if you look at your life right now, you'd probably have to admit you're not living in this life of enjoying life, abundance to the full till it overflows. You want to know something? Everybody's going to overflow with something. You're either going to overflow with bitterness. You're going to overflow with a negative attitude. You're going to overflow with complaining. You're going to overflow with ingratitude. You're going to overflow with um, pessimism. And you're going to overflow with a victim mentality. Or you're going to overflow with love. And you're going to overflow with joy. And you're going to overflow with peace. And you're going to overflow with kindness. And you're going to overflow with the life of God. But I want you to see this. These are Jesus' words. He says, the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you may have and enjoy life. And here was my point earlier. He said that you may have and enjoy life. We all have eternal life. When you are born again, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you have eternal life. But he says he wants us to have it and enjoy it. He wants us to have it and enjoy it. Oh, if I can get this across to you. That God wants us to have the life, and we all have it, but He wants us to enjoy it too. I used to wake up every day as a Christian, after I got saved around 17 years old, I used to wake up every day sad, feeling bad about myself, feeling bad I hadn't done anything that night. (laughs) It's like the guy that, you know, prays, oh God, I just want to thank you that, you know, that I just want to thank you for, for all your goodness. I want to thank you that you've helped me and you've protected me from all the evil. I haven't done anything bad today. I haven't cussed yet. I haven't hurt anybody. I haven't stolen anything. I haven't lied. I haven't cheated all day. But Lord, I'm about to get out of bed this morning and I'm going to need your help then the rest of the day. Some of you get that later. All right, so here's the thing. I used to wake up every day feeling bad, like I don't pray enough, I'm not holy enough, I'm not pure enough, and God wants us to be delivered from all that bondage. And He wants you to know you're enough. 
and he's enough in you. And nothing can separate you from his love. Nothing. Nothing can separate you from his love. And when you have that assurance, you're going to stop beating yourself up. We beat ourselves up because we're not, we don't do enough for everybody. We don't do enough for our kids. We don't do enough for our, for our spouse. We don't do enough for our friends. We don't do enough for, at our job. We just never feel like we do enough. And God doesn't want you to feel that way anymore. And look, look this, like as far as you being productive at your job, that's not on me. That's, I'm not here to get you to be productive on your job. Like if you need to be motivated at your job, then hire a motivational person to help you at your job and in your career. Go to a seminar at your job. I'm talking about at life. Every day, every breathing moment of your life, you can be happy, you can be fulfilled, you can be content. I mean, there are ups and downs for everybody. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is we've been robbed of the joy and the happiness of our salvation because we, thought, because we feel guilty all the time. When are we going to stop feeling guilty? Look at Romans chapter 8. i got to show you this in verse 31. What shall we say then to these things? So we're going to have to start saying some stuff. What shall we say to these things? Now, he just listed for us all these things, and then he lists for them after that principalities, death, life, angels, all, things present, things, uh, things to come, power, height, depth. He lists all these bad things that happen in our lives, and he says, what shall we say to these things? So you know what? You're going to have to start opening your mouth. You want to feel better about your life? You're going to have to use your tongue. Because your tongue is the steering wheel. Your tongue is the rudder of the ship. The whole ship, a whole boat, a cruise liner. The way that it turns is with a small rudder. The boat is uh, two football fields long, but the rudder that turns the boat is like a just a fraction of that and anybody knows if they've ever been on a boat a little boat a little boat that's you know row 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 your boat you know six foot long boat the thing that will turn that little motor boat is one little thing one little piece of that motor called the rudder and if you turn it this way the whole boat turns that way our tongue the bible says is the rudder of our ship it controls the whole direction of our lives. That's why the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Why? Because when, when you're blessing the Lord at all times, when, you're, when His praise is continually in your mouth, your whole life is going to go in that direction. Your whole life is going to follow your tongue. He said, what should we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? You'll stop feeling bad when you start saying things like this. Listen to me. It's really simple. You'll stop feeling bad when you start thinking and saying things like this. If God is for us, who can be against us? I'm just reading the Bible for you right now. If God is for me, who can be? Personalize it. If God is for me, who can be against me? He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up over for us all. How shall he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one that condemns? Verse 34 says, Christ Jesus is the one who has died and is rather is raised from the dead, who's at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? He's saying these are the things that we need to be saying. What shall we say to these things? What shall we say to our guilt? What shall we say to our condemnation? What shall we say to when we feel bad about ourselves? We shall say, if God be for me, who can be against me? That's what we should say. God didn't withhold his own son. Why would he withhold anything from me? Go over with me to... 1 Timothy chapter 6 now. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse 17. Instruct those that are rich in this present world to stop being rich. It's not what he says. He says instruct them not to be conceited. Pride is the problem. Money is not a problem. Pride is the problem. Trusting in your riches, that's a problem. Trusting in money is the problem. Trusting in God. It's funny how on our money it says in God we trust but we trust the money more than we trust God instruct those that are rich in this present world not to be conceited 
and do not fix your hope on the uncertainty of riches, but on God. What is he saying? Fix your hope on God. Who what? Richly supplies us. Let's read this together. Don't, put your, don't fix your hope on the uncertainty of riches. Everybody read together. But on God, who richly supplies us with all things to enjoy. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. Most Christians are shocked this is even in the Bible. Most Christians don't even know this is in here. And once they see it, a lot of people right now, maybe not a lot of you here, maybe somebody watching, or maybe a couple people here, you want to fight me about it. I don't want to fight you about it. It's in the Bible. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. I receive it. Healing's in the Bible. I'm taking You want to argue about it? You argue. I'm speaking in tongues. You want to argue about it? I'm walking in healing. You want to argue about it? I'm going to be generous. You want to argue about it? I'm going to teach people about Jesus. You want to argue about stuff? You go ahead and argue about stuff. But I'm taking the Bible word for word. The way it's written is way, the way He meant it. We just need to understand. We just need to understand the context of it. God richly supplies us with what? All things to what? Enjoy. Enjoy. Really, He's more interested in us enjoying life than us having the things that cause us to enjoy life. The goal is not the things. The goal is the enjoyment of the thing. Like God wants us to enjoy our families. He wants us to enjoy our day. He wants us to enjoy our jobs. He wants us to, you're not going to enjoy it if you think that God doesn't want you to. If you, if you believed a mystical, mythical uh, belief in that you're, that you're meant to suffer and you're meant to be miserable. That's a lie. Jesus bore our grief and he bore our sorrows so that we could be healed, not so that we could remain in grief and in sorrow, but so that we could discover happiness and joy. Jesus said in John chapter 16, 24, he said, ask and you shall receive that your joy would be made full. The goal is not even, look, he said up until now you've asked nothing, but ask and you shall receive so that your joy may be made full. Look at his goal. God's goal, Jesus' goal for us is the point of having the joy, the fullness of joy, that your joy may be full. He, he's the, so, so often we've focused on, I got to ask and receive, I need this thing, I need this thing, I need this thing. God's just using that thing to bring you to a place of joy. God's goal is for you to have joy in His presence, His fullness of joy. And in his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Boy, if we could just get a hold of this, that the, that the point that Jesus is getting to here is the fullness of joy, not asking and receiving. Asking and receiving is a mechanism. Asking and receiving is a method to get us to live in the joy that God intended, to enjoy our lives, to enjoy God. We need to be enjoying our relationship with God. And I'm going to tell you why most people aren't enjoying their relationship with God is because we labor under the guilt of how we've let God down. We have let ourselves down. We have failed. And the reason people do not enjoy their relationship with God is because they base their relationship with God on the promises that they've made to God. I promise you, God, now that I'm saved, I promise you, God, I'm going to be good. I promise you I'm going to pray. I promise you I'm going to read more. I promise you I'm going to do better. I promise you I'm going to be holier. And we make all these promises to God that guess what? We can't keep. And then we're disappointed in ourselves. But Christianity is not built upon the promises that we make to God. No, Christianity is built upon the promises that He makes to us. Your Christian life must be built around God's promises, not your promises. It's God's promises toward us, not, his, not our promises towards God. Now, if you just focused on God's promises in the Bible, and you just prayed this, 
prayed God's promises, spoke God's promises, thought about God's promises, expected God's promises, you would have peace and you would have fullness of joy. But when you're full, and you would enjoy your relationship with God and you, like, there are times where I'm just talking to God, oh Lord, I just love you so much and thank you for being my father. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for your love. Like, that may not sound spiritual to you, but it sure as heck is spiritual to me. It's real to me. I enjoy my relationship with God because it's no longer built around my failure. It's all built around what He did for me. Well, God created us to enjoy our relationship with Him, to enjoy our life. After all, the Christian life is not built upon the promises we make to God. It's built upon the promises He makes to us. It's not about what we've done. It's all about what he's done. That's when the pressure comes off and you start feeling the joy of your salvation. So I hope you were encouraged today and I want to keep connected to you because we're doing something together. I'm taking the mission of taking this love to this world. I take it very seriously that we're connected and I take it very seriously the goals we've set to see 30 million souls saved and lives transformed and we're well on our way to seeing that happen. Glory, all the glory to God. But let's keep going. Let's keep reaching the world together and reach it for Jesus. Together, we're sending the gospel through television, through online content, through social media. We're reaching the lost and the hurting through crisis relief programs, orphan and widows projects, global church planting, and our solar powered audio Bible translated into 10 languages, the top 10 languages of the world. Your donations are making that, making that happen, really, and the long-term effect that your generosity is having is eternal. And thank you so much for those of you who have partnered with me already. Now, I wanna ask you to think about two things today. Number one, would you consider sowing a significant one-time seed of $250 into our mission to see 30 million souls saved and lives transformed? We have an open door to expand our reach even further, getting these solar powered audio Bibles into the hands of those who need to hear the gospel the most. And number two, as the Holy Spirit leads you, would you consider becoming one of my love in action partners for $20 a month or $240 annually? You'll be helping me reach our goal of 30 million souls in the next two years. Also, when you partner with me, you have you'll receive exclusive partner benefits. Don't hesitate, pick up the phone, call the number on your screen or go to gregorydickow.tv and I wanna personally thank you by sending these awesome resources into your hand. I wanna put my book into your hand, Soul Cure, and as well the other materials that you'll see on the screen. My announcer will tell you more and I'll be right back to pray for you. As a special thank you for your gift of $50 or more, Gregory Dickow wants to send you more teaching on today's topic including his popular four CD series, Your Number One Weapon for Winning Every Battle. Along with today's teaching in its entirety, to help you grow in your understanding of God's matchless and unwavering love for you. Go to gregorydickow.tv or call the number on your screen now and ask for offer number one, Stop Feeling Bad. With your generous gift of $175 or more to help Gregory Dickow advance missions and gospel efforts around the world, Gregory Dickow will not only include his brand new book, Soul Cure, as a thank you for your generous support, but he will also send you his popular two CD teaching series, The Solution to Every Problem in Life, Believe in the Goodness of God, along with his popular book, Taking Charge of Your Emotions. Simply ask for offer number two, Stop Feeling Bad. Consider the Love in Action Partnership Program at either $20 per month or $240 per year. Exclusive partner benefits include personal monthly special project email updates, product-specific 50% off discounts in the Greg Redickow Ministries web store, quarterly above and beyond surprise partner-only thank you gifts, unlimited downloadable content. And for joining today, Pastor Greg Redickow will send you a personalized signed copy of his brand new book, Soul Cure. Ask for offer number Love in Action Partner. Well, I want to encourage you and invite you to ask the Holy Spirit to inspire you to do something in the next few moments that will matter for eternity. Remember, our Christianity is best expressed when we're sharing the gospel of Jesus with people worldwide, but especially with those that need it the most, the persecuted, the helpless, the forgotten, the minimized. 
Jesus said what we've done to the least of these, we've done it unto him. So thank you for helping make it possible for me to get these audio Bibles, these solar powered audio Bibles into the hands of precious people who need to hear the gospel like they've never known before. Now, can I pray with you and agree with you? Father, I thank you for delivering us from condemnation and guilt and shame. These forces that are making us feel bad, these forces that were, are constantly accusing us and telling us we're not enough. We bind the forces of darkness. We bind the spirits of accusation. And I just release supernatural peace and joy in every person connected to me right now in Jesus name. Amen. Well, remember to connect with me on social media as well. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Uh, text me on the number on your screen as well. And remember to set your DVR so you never have to miss another broadcast. And I can't wait to see you on our next broadcast. Remember, God's not mad at you. He's mad about you. All right, God bless.